Hi there, on this episode of the Anchor Academy, we're going to be looking at basic machine setup, basic machine usage, and how we can get you up and grinding as quickly as possible. Some of the things we're gonna cover off are daily and weekly walk around tasks, simple functionality like using the MPG wheel, warming the machine up, and getting you ready to grind as quickly as possible. Welcome to the Anchor Academy, I'm Tom Nathan. To start off our episode, we're gonna have a look at some of the basic checks you can do before you use your machine. Some of the things that I like to get in the habit of doing are checking regularly the air preparation unit and the machine lubrication unit, just to make sure they're functioning correctly. So quickly come with me and we'll have a look at them and I'll show you how you can make sure that your machine's running accurately. The first quick check I like to do when I do my daily or weekly walk around is the air preparation unit. Now every anchor machine has an air preparation unit. They are in different locations, so you'll need to become familiar about where they are. The quick checks I like to do is to double check that my mainline pressure is six bar, which is 88 PSI, and I have a steady flow consumption of 36 litres per minute. My purge air is 0.6 of a bar, which is also correct, and my two condensation units don't have any fluid in them. I can double check my condensation units by twisting the knob at the bottom, there you go, and I can feel that there's no condensation coming out. So I'm happy with that, on to the next test. Another really quick visual check is of the automatic lubrication system. It's simply looking to see the max and min lines. Make sure the lubrication oil is towards the max line in the reservoir. With anchor machines, the lubrication systems are in all different parts of the machine, so make sure for your machine you're familiar with where it is, and just make sure it's filled up when needed. Anchor uses and recommends Shell Tonner S3 M220 lubrication oil. So far so good. Another couple of checks we do before we start the machine up is just do a walk around, make sure there's no tripping hazards and make sure you look at your coolant system and there's no leaks from any of the connections. The last thing we need to check is to make sure that the three phase power is connected. In anchor machines we can use 380 to 480 volts three phase at 50 and 60 hertz. So I'm ready to turn my machine on. The first thing I need to do is turn on the breaker. Make sure my machine has the e-stop pushed in and then press the control on button. And you'll know the machine's been activated with the control on button because the light will turn on and the screen will start up. It's now a matter of just letting the machine start itself up. It'll go through loading windows, loading the eye grind, and then loading the application. Once the application window pops up, you know you're good to go. I know that my machine's ready to go because the eye grind window has popped up. Now to enable the machine, it's a three-step process. I pull out the e-stop button, reset any errors using the error reset button, and then I enable the machine. Now people often ask why I have to use the e-stop error reset and machine enable. And the reason's simple. E-stop closes the e-stop chain, error reset resets any errors, and then enable, machine enable, starts a CNC servo system. You can hear that it's running now and it's ready to proceed. So the machine's now enabled. The next thing I need to do to make sure my, my machine's ready to roll is home all of the axes. Now you'll know when the axes need to be homed when the corresponding LED light is flashing for the axes. So here, all of the axes need to be homed. Now to do that, it's simple. There's a button here that says ACK, and that means acknowledge. And there's another button here that says home axis. When you press them together, it will home all of the axes. Now before I do that, I just wanna visually look inside the machine and make sure there's not gonna be any crash scenarios with wheels or tools. So the axes are good to go. I press the ACK button, and the home axis button. A trick for young players is always make sure that the feed rate pot is up, because if it's set to zero and the machine axes can't move, eventually the machine will error out. As you can see here, the Z axis is now homed, and so is the X axis, and that's why the LED has stopped flashing. The regular homing sequence is Z, X, Y, A, C, and on this machine, configured with a P axis, the P axis is always last. 
once all the lights stop flashing, you know that your machine is homed and ready to go. So the machine's now enabled and the axes are all homed. Another really good thing to do on your machine is get yourself familiar with the buttons on the front panel. Now, if we wanna move our machine around, we can select the axes down here and we can move the increments forward and back using the MPG wheel. To enable us to use them, we need to put the machine into manual mode. As you can see here, it's currently in automatic mode. So if you press that button again, it will go into manual mode. And we can simply select an axis here. I'm gonna choose the x-axis and we can choose the increment moving it forward and back. Times one is one micron, 10, 10 microns, 100, 100 microns. The MX Ranger machines are unique in that they have a times 1000 as well, but the FX, CPX and TX only go up to the times 100. So we can select an axis, open the door, and if I rotate the MPG wheel forward in the positive direction, the x-axis will actually move away from the wheel. Because remember, the positive direction is always away from the wheel. People always ask as well about the A-axis and the C-axis. Now the A-axis is a rotation about the X-axis and the C-axis is a rotation about the Z-axis. Now once again, the positive direction from the A-axis is away from the wheel. So if we move it in a positive direction, it'll come towards the operator. The C-axis is the same. If we move it in a positive direction, it'll swing around anti-clockwise and if we put it in the negative direction, it'll come to us in a clockwise. Remember, always negative is towards the wheel. So our machine's enabled and we've been moving the axes around. So we're getting to the point where we can start grinding. Anchor's unique in that it has an automatic function for warming your machine up prior to grinding. It's called the launch pad function and it's accessed by the utilities menu. You press utility, utilities, launch pad. And what this enables you to do is it allows you to choose a part program and a time that you'd like to launch that part program and it can run itself automatically. So for me, if I'm starting my shift tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and I want the machine nice and warm by that stage, I can set the launch pad to start at 6.30 in the morning. So by the time I get here at seven, the machine is ready and warmed up. Just make sure when you run the launch pad function, that you, select, you make sure that the machine is enabled and has all errors reset before you launch it. So for me here, there's warmup.pp, which is a part program that's already there. I'm gonna choose that I want my start time to be tomorrow, the 9th of June at 6.30. And then I simply press start. And that means by tomorrow morning at seven o'clock, my machine would have been moving around, running coolant, running the spindle, and making sure it's nice and warm by the time I come in. Well, thanks for watching this episode of the Anchor Academy. Whether you're new or old to using Anchor machines, I hope that gave you some tips and tricks on how you can use your machine more effectively and how you can do a quick walk around to make sure that everything's good before you go. Remember to contact us through social media channels or comment below if there's anything you'd like us to talk about on the Anchor Academy. I've been Tom Nathan, happy grinding.